Dear friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Ritu Gupta. I am a professor in laboratory oncology at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. I will be discussing the module on applications of flow cytometry in medical sciences. Flow cytometry is the technology that allows rapid analysis of multiple characteristics of single cells in qualitative and quantitative manner. Today we will study the following applications of flow cytometry. We will look at the application of identification and enumeration of specific cell subsets to differentiate the healthy from the disease states. We will also look at the utility of flow cytometry in diagnosis, prognosis and monitoring of hematological malignancies. We will look at the qualitative and quantitative expression of antigens on the cell surface and how this information is useful in analyzing medical disorders. And we will also look at some of the applications of flow cytometry that assess the cellular functions. Briefly, anything that can be turned into single cell suspension is amenable to flow cytometry which means that all body fluids can be subjected to flow cytometric analysis. In addition, any solid tissue or tumor which can be converted into a single cell suspension can also be analyzed using flow cytometry. Coming to the first set of applications which involve the identification and enumeration of specific cell populations, under this heading we will discuss the applications using the lymphocyte subset analysis which is also useful in monitoring the AIDS patients. We will also look at the subset analysis of B lymphocytes namely the CD20 positive cells to monitor the monoclonal antibody therapy and we will also look at enumeration of stem cells which is useful in autologous stem cell transplantation. In addition, this principle can also be applied to do the quality control of leukoreduction in the blood banks. This is an example of lymphocyte subset analysis in the peripheral blood. In this diagram, you can see that the CD45 antibody has been used to identify the leukocytes. Now further, the fluorochrome tagged CD3 antibody has been used to identify the T lymphocytes and the CD19 antibody to identify the B lymphocytes. The CD3 antibody can be uh, positive cells can further be divided into CD4 positive T helper cells and CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells. In addition, the natural killer cells can be identified using the specific markers of CD16 and CD56. The CD3 subset here has been evaluated further for the CD4 and CD8 ratio, which is a measure of T helper to cytotoxic T cell ratio. A normal ratio in a healthy individual is between 1 and 4 and an inverted CD4 CD8 ratio of less than 1 is characteristic of HIV infection and is linked to CD4 T cell depletion and expansion of activated HIV specific cytotoxic T lymphocytes. This ratio thus is useful as a reliable marker for monitoring AIDS patients on antiretroviral therapy and this plot shows the CD3 positive blue colored T cells which have been further identified into the CD4 positive and CD8 positive cells. The flow cytometry can not only identify them but also quantitate them. Flow cytometry is being increasingly used in blood bank to assess leukocyte contamination and leukocyte reduced blood products. Leukocytes which are naturally collected along with other cellular elements in a whole blood collection are considered a contaminant of other cellular blood components like RBCs and platelets and they contribute to severe adverse consequences of blood transfusion such as immunologically mediated effects, infectious disease transmission and reperfusion injury. In this example, CD45 has been used to identify the leukocytes. The red blood cells which are denoted in red in the first plot are the are negative for CD45 and in the second plot you can see some red dots which stain for CD45. These are the contaminating leukocytes. Thus by counting the number of the contaminating leukocytes we can check the quality of our leuco reduced blood product. Flow cytometry is also useful for monitoring treatment after anti-CD20 therapy. 
For example, anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody rituximab which was developed as an immunotherapy for the treatment of B cell lymphomas as it targets CD20 antigen expressed on B cells and eliminates them. Now the B cell depletion with rituximab is being increasingly used in clinical transplantation and autoimmune disorders. In this example, you can see that the lymphocytes have been identified based on their characteristic expression of bright CD45 and low site scatter. Now the CD19 antibody has been used to identify all the B cells and then the CD20 antibody has been used to identify the CD20 positive B cells remaining after anti-CD20 therapy. Now we come to the second set of applications which involve the diagnosis, prognosis and monitoring of hematological malignancies. The best example of simultaneous multiparametric analysis by flow cytometry is the immunophenotyping of leukemias and lymphomas. Immunophenotyping is part of the diagnostic workup of hematological malignancies offer a rapid and effective means of providing a diagnosis. In this example, the bone marrow cells have been labeled with different antibodies. The expression of CD45 on the blast cells is dimmer than the lymphocytes and these blast cells have been gated under the gate A. Now in the subsequent graphs the expression of myeloid antigen that is MPO on the red cells, the CD13, 33 have been evaluated and we feel, we see that CD33 and 11B which are the myeloid markers are brightly expressed on these cells and these cells do not stain for the B marker like CD19, CD79A or the T cell marker CD7. So thus making a diagnosis of acute myeloid leukemia. This example shows how a diagnosis of B acute lymphoblastic leukemia is made. The blasts have been gated using the CD45 antibody. The red cells in this plot are the blasts. Now the expression of CD34 which is a marker of immaturity and CD79A which is a marker of B cells tells us that we are dealing with the case of B acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Similarly, for the identification of chronic lymphoid disorders, this technology is very useful. In this particular example, the dual expression of CD5 and CD19 on the population of interest along with other presence of other B cell markers help us in making a diagnosis of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Not only in the diagnosis but also in prognosis of the hematological malignancy, this technology is useful. Using this technique, in this particular example, the CLL cells have been identified and now the expression of prognostic markers ZAP70 and CD38 has been looked at on the using flow cytometry. Now if you see using this technology, we could identify what percentage of the CLL cells express ZAP70 and what percentage of them express CD38 and what percentage co-express both CD38 and ZAP70. This information is useful in predicting prognosis and treatment outcome in patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. This tool is also useful for assessing response to treatment. In conditions like multiple myeloma which is a malignant condition where plasma cells are increased in number. You can see in this plot that the plasma cells have been identified using specific markers of CD38 and 138 and before therapy there are large number of plasma cells but after treatment the number of the malignant plasma cells have gone down. They may not be appreciable by using the simple microscopic evaluation and flow cytometry allows us to monitor the treatment response by allowing us to quantify a small number of remaining malignant plasma cells. Now we will discuss some of the applications which are based on quantitation of antigens. The quantitation of antigens on the cell surface using flow cytometry has been used for the diagnosis of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, for identification of fetal cells and F cells in the evaluation of sickle cell anemia and thalassemia for diagnosing hereditary spherocytosis, for enumerating reticulocytes and for cross match in transplantation. 
these are the dot plots which show how a diagnosis of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria or PNH is made using flow cytometry. PNH is a condition where there are, are red blood cells are susceptible to hemolysis. This hemolysis occurs because of the deficiency of certain proteins which are called the GPI anchored proteins on the cell surface. Two such proteins are CD55 and CD59. So, in these dot plots you can see that the, after the gating of red blood cells the expression of CD55 and 59 is reduced on a small subset of red blood cells. The quantitation of number of red blood cells that lack the CD55 or 59 antigens help the clinicians make a decision on what is the susceptibility level of these this patient to undergo next round of hemolysis and manage them accordingly. In this particular application, we can see using an antibody against hemoglobin F, the fetal red blood cells can be identified. In certain conditions where there is an incompatibility between the maternal blood group and the fetal blood group, there are chances of hemolysis and injury to the fetus. In such conditions, it is important to identify and quantitate the number of fetal cells in the maternal circulation so that appropriate treatment can be instituted. Therefore, this flow cytometric tools allow us not only to identify but quantitate the amount of fetal red blood cells into the maternal circulation and dose them accordingly. In addition, in certain hematological disorders, there is presence of red blood cells which contain small amount of fetal hemoglobin. These cells are called the F cells and the conditions where the F cells are increased include the sickle cell anemia and certain thalassemias. So, measuring or quantitating the number of F cells into the circulation, the disease severity can be assessed. Another application is in identification and enumeration of reticulocytes. Reticulocytes are immature red blood cells which contain small amounts of residual RNA. Now, as you are aware that the red blood cells do not contain any nucleus, we identify the reticulocytes by the presence of this small amount of RNA and differentiate them from the mature red blood cells. So, we use a dye called thiazole orange which is a fluorescent dye and specifically binds to the RNA to identify reticulocytes. The measure of the erythropoietic activity depends on the reticulocyte fraction in the circulation. So, this is also useful in the evaluation of anemia and in the recovery phase of the patients with stem cell transplantation. Flow cytometry can be used to cross match a recipient serum with donor lymphocytes to detect antibodies that could interfere with engraftment. Prior to organ transplantation, the organ donor's lymphocytes are incubated with serum from the potential recipient of the graft. After washing, bound immunoglobulins are detected using an FITC conjugated anti-human IgG antibodies. The T cells are identified using a PE CD3 conjugate. Now we will discuss the next set of application of flow cytometry where utility of assessment of cellular function is highlighted. These applications include the analysis of cell cycle and ploidy, the cell viol viability and apoptosis, the proliferation assays to determine the proliferation fraction of cells or the proliferating ability of the cells. We can also use flow cytometry to determine the multi-drug resistance due to the drug efflux pumps. We can also use this to measure the intracellular cytokine levels and signal transductions. The cytometry B array is another application which can simultaneously detect multiple cytokine levels and lastly the fusion gene product detection using flow cytometry. The measurement of cellular DNA content by flow cytometry uses fluorescent dyes that intercalate into the DNA helical structure. The fluorescent signal is directly proportional to the amount of DNA in the nucleus and can identify gross gains or losses in DNA. The abnormal DNA content also known as DNA content aneuploidy can be determined in a tumor cell population. 
the ploidy status is indicated by DNA index which is calculated as a ratio of mean fluorescent intensity of the tumor cells and the mean fluorescent intensity of the normal lymphocytes. The MFI or mean fluorescent intensity is a measure of the expression profile of a particular parameter or fluorophore. In this and the subsequent examples, I will be showing you the DNA ploidy using FX cycle violet dye which is a dye which specifically binds to the DNA. In this example from a case with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the blasts have been gated using the differential expression of two antigens that is CD45 and CD34. The aqua color events are 34 positive and are dim to negative for CD45 are the blast population and the CD45 bright 34 negative red population are the mature lymphocytes. In the next histogram you can see that the mean fluorescent intensity of the effect cycle violet is 213.35 and in the next plot the mean fluorescent intensity of the aqua colored cells or the blast is 250.98. So, the DNA index has been calculating by dividing the mean fluorescent intensity of the blast cells by the mean fluorescent intensity of the mature lymphocytes and we get a DNA index of 1.18. So, this tumor is hyperdeployed because anything which is above 1.06 is taken as a sign of hyperdeploidy. In this example, you can see again the blasts have been gated using the differential expression of CD45 on them and discriminated from the red colored lymphocytes which are very bright for CD45. Now in the subsequent histogram plots you can see the mean fluorescent intensity of the lymphocytes and the mean fluorescent intensity of the blast cells. The DNA index again has been calculated by dividing the mean fluorescent intensity of the blast by the MFI of the mature lymphocytes and we get a DNA index of 1.05. So, this tumor will be classified as diploid. The loss of integrity of the plasma membrane can be evaluated by flow cytometry either using dyes such as propidium iodide which are excluded by an intact membrane or using fluorescent dyes which are retained in the cell only if the membrane is intact. In this example shown, the dead cells in the lower right quadrant of the dot plot are propidium iodide or PI positive. During apoptosis, the phosphatidyl serine residues which are normally located on the internal surface of the plasma membrane redistribute to the external surface. The NXN5 combined with combines phosphatidyl serine and this change can be observed by incubating the unfixed cells with labeled NXN5. A stain for NXN5 can readily be combined with a stain for surface antigens as well. The apoptotic cells here can be distinguished from the necrotic cells with NXN and PI dual staining. Cell proliferation can also be analyzed using flow cytometry. For this, two approaches can be used. First is to observe changes in the cell cycle as described in the DNA content analysis previously. And the other is to follow the number of cell divisions over a period of time as I will be describing now. If a fluorescent label is attached to a cell, as the cell divides, the label will be shared equally between the two daughter cells. The number of cell divisions can be determined by following the dilution of the label as the cells divide. Carboxyfluorescein diacetate succinitimide ester or CFSE is one such dyes that diffuses passively into the live cells and here it is converted into its ester. Now, its reaction with the amines stabilizes this fluorescent product inside the cell. 
after each cell division the amount of this product reduces to half and this is used to trace the daughter cell population. Now this method is most informative when applied to resting lymphocytes before activation and can also be combined with an immunophenotypic analysis. In this representative co-culture experiment, the T regulatory cells which are CD4 positive, CD25 positive were mixed with the responder T cells which are CD4 positive and CD25 negative cells and they were all CFSC labeled at an increasing ratio as indicated in this diagram. The T regulatory cells mediate suppression as indicated by reduced proliferation of responder T cells with the increasing ratios of T regs. The histogram A shows the maximum proliferating cells and the C shows more than 50 percent reduction in the proliferating cells. The uptake and retention of drugs which are fluorescent can be measured by flow cytometry. There are protein complexes in the cell membrane that actively pump compounds out of the cell. These pumps act on many of the drugs used to treat cancer and over expression of the proteins will confer resistance to a wide range of drugs giving rise to multi drug resistance or MDR. In this example, the fluorescent probes or the drugs including rhodamine, diethyl oxacarbocyanin, DIOC2 and methotrexate with their respective pumps that is P glycoprotein, multidrug resistant protein MRP and the breast cancer resistant protein BCRP has been used. The fluorescence of the DIOC2 dye shows a log shift see the shift from the green histogram relative to the red in the presence of blocker and marginal shift is observed with rhodamine and methotrexate. Thus this method can be used to identify the working pattern of the drug efflux pumps in a particular case. The flow cytometry is instrumental in deciphering the functional status of immune cells. In this example, the interferon gamma cytokine positive activated cytotoxic CDT8 positive T cells have been shown. The lymphocytes were gated on forward scatter and side scatter that is the R1 gate and further gated on CD3 positive, CD8 positive T cells the R3 gate. The R4 gate indicates a subset of 0.55 percent cells of the total lymphocytes which are CD8 positive, CD69 positive, interferon gamma positive T lymphocytes. Thus, this process can be used to identify and enumerate the cytokine producing cells and the intensity of the cytokine or the amount of cytokine present in these cells. The fluorescent microsphere offer a new technology involving the flow cytometry a biomolecule that can be attached to a bead and in its interaction with other molecules is studied. For example, the binding of an antigen to an antibody. A particularly powerful application is the use of multiplexed arrays as shown here in which sets of beads each with a different fluorescent intensity is attached to a different antibody. After incubation with the patient's serum, beads with antigens bound to the surface can be detected with fluorescein labeled antibodies. Using this, a wide range of molecules such as hormones, cardiac markers, therapeutic drugs and drugs of abuse and blood bond viruses can be measured. The same technology can be applied for hybridization based analysis for the detection of specific nucleic acid sequences. The flow cytometric immunobead analysis can also be used to detect the fusion transcripts. Initially, this assay was developed for the detection of presence of BCR-ABL1 fusion proteins in CML lysates and this it was envisaged can be used for the diagnosis of monitoring of CML patients for initial response to therapy. This assay is designed with a bead bound anti-BCR catching antibody and a fluorochrome conjugated anti-ABL detection antibody and detects all types of BCR-ABL proteins in leukemic cells with high sensitivity and specificity.
The chromosomal translocations of the human mixed lineage leukemia gene have about 80 direct MLL fusions and about 120 reciprocal MLL fusions. The flow cytometric immunobead assay with individual set of bead bound anti fusion partner catching antibodies as shown here and a common fluorochrome conjugated anti BAMLL detection antibody can be used for the identification of MLL fusion partners. Of late, many other fusion transcripts are being identified using the fusion gene products. To summarize, I would say that flow cytometry is a powerful technique for correlating multiple characteristics on single cells. The applications in medical sciences include the following but are not limited and they include the immunological monitoring of HIV infected individuals, the DNA content and ploidy analysis, the immunophenotyping for the diagnosis of leukemia and lymphoma, for assessment of prognosis and for assessment of other structural and functional properties of the cells of interest. Thank you.